Hello, I'm Barry Farrell. I'm the head of the Cinema Business Unit at QSC Audio. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about real-world amplifier power specifications. Uh, with the advent of immersive audio and the need to have uh, high power to individual surround loudspeakers, uh, we've seen a fair amount of over-specification going on where amplifiers are sized larger than they need to be for most common applications. Uh, part of this comes from a misunderstanding of amplifier uh, performance and specifications. So we'd like to take a few minutes here to talk about the DPA amplifiers, uh, which are our brand new line, and uh, compare those to our DCA range of amplifiers. Uh, to start with, the DPA, uh, there are three models or three power ratings within the line. We have a networked version which uh, has the Q suffix on it, so that would be the DPA 4.2 Q versus the DPA 4.2, which is the analog input version. Uh, the power ratings uh, are the same uh, regardless of whether it's a network or analog input. And uh, the 4.2 is conservatively rated at a continuous 400 watts per channel into 8 ohms. The 4.3 at a continuous 625 watts into 8 ohms. And the 4.5 at 1250 watts per channel, continuous. Uh, so these uh, power ratings are, um, are very high. and uh, but they're not really representative of the peak power that's delivered to the load, especially when compared to a linear amplifier design. So when we're designing with the DPA amplifiers, we actually do publish a more realistic burst power specification. And this is a number that is very conservative as well and is more uh, representative of what the amplifier will do with real program material in the real world. So if we were to look at this, chart, we could see that the uh, DPA 4.2 is rated into 8 ohms at 500 watts, the 4.3 at 900 watts, and the 4.5 at 1200 watts per channel. Uh, these are the numbers that we should be designing with when uh, calculating amplifier size for a cinema installation. Why is this? Why do we have different numbers for sine waves and different numbers for program material? What it really comes down to is that sine waves in no way, shape, or form represent the realistic audio signals that will be applied to an amplifier in normal use. Uh, audio signals have a dynamic range. Uh, in essence, there is a peak level that they hit, and then there is the average level that the amplifier is expected to provide. And with normal audio material, uh, you know, it's very common to have uh, dynamic range in excess of 10 dB. Since 10 dB represents uh, 10 times the power, uh, what that would mean is if an amplifier were reproducing a peak of, uh, say, 1,000 watts, uh, then it would only be reproducing 100 watts uh, on average. So that would be the actual continuous power. Uh, so when we design an amplifier, we have to take into account the thermal performance of the amplifier, how well it can dissipate heat, uh, as well as the continuous current that needs to be supplied uh, to the load. And as long as the thermal capacity and the current capacity of the amplifier can support the total voltage swing with program material, the amplifier will perform extremely well. Uh, DCA amplifiers, which are our historic uh, amplifier line of choice for cinemas, are a very heavy-duty amplifier platform, and they are, in fact, based on the same internal components as we use for our tour-grade, uh, you know, professional audio amplifiers. Uh, so we aim for a very rigorous and heavy-duty one-third continuous pink noise power at four ohms uh, with no thermal limiting or uh, current limiting. Uh, this is actually a very high value. Uh, very few amplifiers are truly capable of one-third continuous operation. Uh, to provide greater than that is actually just uh, not cost-effective. Uh, you know, it is easily possible to have an amplifier that could play sine waves at a thousand watts continuously all day and all night, uh, but it would cost so much and would actually have lower performance than building an amplifier with higher voltage rails capable of higher peaks uh, with real-world program material. The linear amplifier design, 
which is the common form of amplifier uh, until recently, where Class D designs, uh, which is a switching output section, have become more common. Uh, DCA amplifiers and other linear amplifiers, it's not unusual for them to have voltage rails that provide about 1.5 dB of dynamic range. Uh, in other words, the amplifier will play 1.5 dB louder with program material than the sine wave rating. Uh, at 4 ohms, it's not unusual to have about 2 dB of dynamic range uh, so that uh, you can actually get this extra power with program compared to the sine wave rating. Now, if you were to try to increase those voltage rails to reproduce higher peaks in a linear amplifier, uh, you greatly reduce the efficiency of the amplifier. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of heat that's dissipated and you will draw a lot of excess current just to produce that heat. So it's not really practical to have extremely high voltage rails with a linear amplifier. Uh, but we can do that with class D and we'll show uh, how that uh, improves things. So. A sine wave, let's uh, look at this as well. A sine wave actually has a 3 dB peak to average ratio. If we look at the total watts that would be delivered by a sine wave, uh, you know, let's take a common example. If we, ta if we take a sine wave that uh, has a peak value of 100 volts, the RMS value that you would measure with an AC meter is actually 70.7 volts. And that difference between 70.7 and 100 volts is, represents a doubling of the power. So uh, the power delivered into a load is the voltage squared divided by the impedance of that load. So if we were looking at uh, uh, you know, a, a situation where you took uh, 100 volts times 100 volts, that's 10,000 whereas 70.7 times 70.7 is 5,000. So that factor of 2 to 1 is why we deliver twice as much power at the peak of the sine wave as we do compared to the RMS value. So this is important because an amplifier that's rated at 400 watts RMS is actually producing 800 watt peaks even without taking into account the dynamic headroom considerations. As we said, linear amplifiers are limited in rail voltage due to the thermal and efficiency considerations. Uh, the new DPA and DPAQ amplifiers, especially the 4.3 and 4.5, uh, they have very high voltage rails. They're about 155 volts. If you were to take 155 volts and square it, put it into an 8 ohm load, you're talking about 3,000 watt peak power and 1500 watts RMS burst power. Uh, that is a tremendous increase in uh, dynamic headroom over a conventional linear amplifier of similar continuous power rating. As a matter of fact, one thing to take away from this is since the 4.3 and the 4.5 have the same voltage rails and differ only in continuous current capability, if you were designing a uh, immersive sound system and needed large our AP 15 inch and 12 inch high powered speakers for the front surround application, uh, you would uh, actually be very well off powering those with a 4.3. The extra current of a 4.5 would really never be needed on full range program material. And uh, you know that combination of an AP 5152 and a, and a uh, DPA 4.3 amplifier actually plays about as loud as you can expect from a uh, uh, you know, a speaker of its size and configuration. Uh, putting more watts into it really is just going to create more heat. Uh, the DPA 4.5s really should just be uh, reserved for powering subwoofers. You could put four 4 ohm subwoofers, for instance, on a, on a 4.5. The DPA 4.2 doesn't have the high voltage rails of its bigger brothers. It's more at about 83 volts, which is right in line with conventional amplifiers. Uh, but the important thing here is that we've designed the SR1290 surround speaker to be a 4 ohm load. So since that power equation involves the voltage squared on top and the impedance of the load on the denominator, if we cut that denominator in half, we've effectively doubled the power available for a given voltage swing. So uh, 
we can easily provide seven, 800 watts RMS peaks into an SR1290 driven by a DPA 4.2 because it's only a four ohm load. Let's look at, at a theoretical uh, peak power chart. Uh, what I've done here is taken the actual DC rail voltage. Uh, I know that sounds like an overly complicated technical term, but what it really means is a, you know, a power amplifier has, has two components. It has a power supply, and then it has the amplifier or output section. And uh, what the power supply does is it takes the incoming AC power from the wall and converts that into a DC voltage that the amplifier can then use to generate the output signal. And uh, the peak voltage that could be delivered by an amplifier is constrained by the DC voltage rails that you put into the power amplifier section. And with linear design, it was very common to figure out what 8 ohm power you need and then make the voltage rails a little bit higher than that. And uh, we can see that with our smallest DCA amplifier, we've selected 67 volts as the rail voltage. Move up to the DCA 1622, it moves up to 83. The uh, 2422, we've got 99 volt rails, and so on and so, so forth, all the way up to the DCA 3422, which is the largest DCA amplifier in the range, with 132 volt rail. Now, uh, why is this important? Well, the DPA 4.3 and 4.5 are 155 volt rails. So they are capable of dynamic headroom greater than even our largest DCA amplifier. So if we were to look at this chart and figure out where does a DPA 4.2 and a 4.3 and a 4.5 come in, we can see over here that the 4.2 is also at about 83 volts, which is similar to the DCA 1622. But uh, the other advantage that the DPA amplifiers have is that they have a more sophisticated power supply technology. In the DPA 4.2, it is a fully regulated power supply so that the output rails do not change under loading from the amplifier or if the voltage from the wall sags. Uh, so they actually effectively play louder than one would expect uh, with a similar voltage from an unregulated design like the DCAs or uh, most competitive amplifiers. Now the uh, DPA 4.3 and 4.5, they add an, an extra twist. They have a feature called power factor correction. And power factor correction is a way of allowing a switching power supply to draw energy from the wall continuously rather than just at the peaks of the AC voltage waveform. So it dramatically lowers the current draw uh, compared to a non-power factor corrected supply. So even though these are very large high output amplifiers, they won't draw so much power from the wall that it causes the, the incoming voltage to sag. Uh, so uh, in any case, the DPAs have very high and uh, very well regulated DC rails uh, compared to normal linear amps. If we look at the DC rail voltages, we can take that voltage, and if we're looking at 8 ohms, we could just simply say, well, what's that rail voltage uh, squared divided by 8 ohms? And, uh, you know, if we were to take, let's look at the 3022, for instance. It's got 115 volt rails, and uh, that would translate into uh, 1,653 watts into 8 ohms. Uh, but that's the peak power. That's the peak of that sine wave. What we really want to talk about is what is the RMS power, because that's how amplifiers are normally specified. So uh, that is then uh, 826 watts, which is half. It's down 3 dB. And we compare that 826 watt figure with the rating. The spec sheet rating of the amplifier is an uh, incredibly conservative uh, 550 watts for this amplifier. Now, there is actually a good rule of thumb for the um, uh, calculation of dynamic headroom of these amplifiers, and it turns out to be about 1.5 dB of dynamic headroom compared to the continuous rating. So uh, 1.5 dB bigger than 550 watts is 777 watts, uh, so I would say that a good 
peak rating, if we were to place one on the DCA 3022, would be about 800 watts. That's about halfway between the uh, rule of thumb and the theoretical uh, number we get from the rail voltage. But if we really, you know, want to go to a DPA 4.3 and apply the same logic, you know, that 155 volts gives us 3 kilowatts and 1,500 watts of uh, dynamic power. So we should expect to see a dynamic headroom of at least 3 dB higher, 3 dB being twice the power. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be unusual to see 15, 1,600 watt uh, RMS power ratings out of the DPA, and that could be as high as 2 or 3 kilowatts uh, on, on peak numbers. So what I'd like to do after this uh, long uh, discussion of amplifier theory is actually show you this effect in action. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the amplifiers uh, with a sine wave and see that they are in fact matched for output. And then we're going to put some pink noise into them and some uh, actual program material from a uh, cinema server and we're going to see how far we can turn the amplifiers up before they begin to clip or limit. Uh, and then we'll see a real-world demonstration of the effect of uh, high rail voltages of the modern DPA Class D amplifier. Okay, now after all that theory, let's look at some amplifiers actually in action. Uh, let me show you what we've got set up here. We have a DCA 3022. We have a DPA 4.3Q, and we have a QSIS core. The QSIS provides all the DSP and test signals and instrumentation for these two amplifiers. We're using a data port interface card to instrument the DCA amplifier, and the DPA amplifier, the DPAQ, actually just connects over Ethernet and has full instrumentation already. So we've taken some key elements of the amplifier performance and made a control interface uh, on this touchscreen here. So we can actually see the output volts, the output current, and the calculated peak power of the amplifier for each channel. And uh, QSIS is able to take the voltage and the current being delivered and calculate the load impedance, which is shown in these boxes right here. Uh, so we're at about, you know, a range of eight to eight and a half ohms. Uh, on each channel, we're actually using just a load resistor because hooking this up to speakers would be so loud that uh, we wouldn't want to be uh, in the same room with them uh, during the test. So uh, what we did was we used uh, QSIS to balance the signal to each amplifier. So uh, the important thing to note is that uh, we're running the sine wave right now, and we've got about 4.68 volts output from each amplifier channel. And uh, uh, so that results in about two and a half watts of output given it's a nominal eight ohm load. Uh, now that we've got the amplifiers balanced, if we send the same signal to both amplifiers, uh, we can now tell when uh, one amplifier clips compared to the other and see how much additional uh, dynamic headroom is available. All right, now we're applying pink noise uh, to all of the amplifier channels, uh, both channels of the DCA and all four channels of the DPA. And uh, we're at a level of minus 20 dB, and uh, you can see activity on the uh, signal present LEDs of the uh, DCA uh, amplifier and the lower step of the uh, signal LEDs on the DPA. Uh, at this point, you know, we can see that we're delivering peaks that are, you know, topping out uh, at about 150 watts uh, on, the, uh, on the instrumentation screen. Uh, so we're still, uh, you know, quite a ways from uh, really using the full capability of these amplifiers. If we turn it uh, to minus 11 dB, we should see that the LEDs of the uh, DCA 3022 just begin to flicker, the, the clip LEDs. Uh, this represents uh, about the maximum power that we're going to see out of the amplifier uh, before the clip limiter starts to take effect. Now it's still going to sound fine because the clip limiter will allow a few dB of overdrive with no real audible uh, artifacts. But we can uh, look over on the instrumentation screen and we can see that we are uh, seeing peak power 
uh, in excess of a kilowatt. Uh, so it's uh, not at all uh, hard to believe that we could get, uh, you know, burst power out of this of, uh, you know, 800 watts as the uh, rule of thumb would indicate. Uh, if we look at the uh, DPA amplifier now, let's find out just how far we can go uh, before we start to see clipping from the DPA. So uh, let's shut off the uh, DCA 3022 now. And uh, we're at minus 11, so let's go to minus 8 dB. That would be twice the power. And still going just fine, and we're seeing peaks uh, that are actually just touching 2 kilowatts occasionally. Uh, let's go to minus uh, 7 dB. So we're now 4 dB more output, more than twice as much peak power. And uh, now we're regularly seeing peaks over 2 kilowatts. Let's go to minus 6 dB. Okay, at minus 6 dB, we're seeing a little bit of uh, limiter action. Uh, the peaks are hitting 2300 watts on a fairly regular basis. Uh, so this amplifier, which has a very conservative continuous rating of 625 watts uh, into 8 ohms, uh, we now see it delivering 2300 watt peaks. Uh, that's, you know, nearly four times the power, which is uh, 6 dB. Uh, this is the incredible dynamic capability of these amplifiers. Uh, this is why, in fact, uh, you can't specify a DPA amplifier in the way that you specified uh, the older linear designs. Uh, the 4.3 has such dynamic power that it is perfectly fine for screen channels in the largest cinemas and the front surround speakers uh, when using our AP series in the largest cinemas. And then uh, the 4.2 is actually uh, perfectly matched to the 1290 for other surround applications. And the 4.5 uh, really only needs to be reserved for subwoofer use in the largest rooms. Uh, you could get away with the 4.3 in many applications. So uh, that's what it looks like with pink noise. So we're seeing a 5 dB uh, improvement in dynamic headroom for two amplifiers that are very similarly rated. 550 for the uh, DCA, 625 for the uh, 4.3. Uh, so, you know, that indicates the dynamic capability of the DPA amplifiers compared to linear designs. Now let's take a look at the amplifiers uh, playing real program material. We have a DCinema server that's feeding the QSIS core with actual content from a uh, trailer and uh, we're feeding that signal into the 3022 and the DPA amplifier. Uh, the left and the center are going into the top amplifier and then left, center, right and left again are going into the DPA amplifier. Uh, we've set the signal level. We have a, an attenuation value uh, that you can see on the screen over here at minus 5 dB. And uh, as the trailer plays, uh, you can see that the peaks are loud enough to illuminate the, uh, the red clip LED on the loudest scenes. Uh, we'll let it run through here, and you can see the uh, LEDs uh, flicker on the, on the loud passages. There we go, we're getting some flickering of the clip LEDs. So this represents uh, the loudest signal level with program material that we can play with the 3022 amplifier. So now that we've uh, seen that clipping with program material occurs at about minus five dB on the DCA 3022, uh, we've turned it off and uh, we're going to see uh, just how much more level we can put into the DPA amplifier with the same program material. So uh, let's, uh, let's take it up 3 dB. Let's go to minus 2 dB. 
and uh, that represents twice the power. So a 3 dB increase requires twice the watts. And uh, we'll let the trailer play again, and uh, uh, we should see no signs of, uh, of clipping on the uh, DPA amplifier at this level. We are seeing some uh, dramatically large peaks. Uh, certainly, uh, I've seen peaks uh, in excess of 1,500 watts at this uh, at this setting. And next time around, uh, we'll uh, turn it up another 2 dB. So this is now uh, 5 dB louder than the DCA 3022. So we'll run it at, at uh, 0 dB. And uh, at this uh, level, we should see no sign of clipping on the DPA amplifier. Uh, peaks at this point uh, are likely to exceed 2 kilowatts. Yes, I've seen uh, on the metering on the screen, I've seen peaks in excess of 2,000 watts. And even through the loud sequences, I believe uh, no signs of uh, limiting or uh, distress from the amplifier at all. All right. Uh, let's go with plus 1 dB. This is uh, an increase of 6 dB compared to the DCA. Uh, this would be four times the power. And uh, at this point, uh, you know, we would be producing uh, peaks well in excess of 2,000 watts and uh, actually have seen uh, those kind of peaks on the metering. We'll see if the loudest scenes uh, can produce any signs of clipping. Still doing pretty good. I think we're right on the limit. Uh, I think we saw one uh, flicker of the clip LED. Uh, so uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that was still less clipping than the DCA was uh, showing at uh, minus five. So there really is a, a 6 dB advantage to the DPA amplifier uh, with program material from a real cinema server uh, compared to the DCA uh, range of uh, product. Uh, this, uh, I hope, will give you an idea of how to uh, more accurately specify your cinema sound systems so that we're not uh, needlessly throwing uh, unused uh, amplifier watts into the system. Uh, you know, we should save the money that we would be spending on these amplifiers to do other improvements to the system, whether it's better speakers, more speakers, or acoustic improvements to the room. Uh, we'd just like to see uh, the systems designed uh, appropriately so that uh, we're not wasting uh, amplifier watts and wasting your dollars. Uh, that's a, a real-world uh, demonstration of the advantage of DPA, and thank you very much.